All right, folks, Steve Harris of Low Class Media. We're out here at Cole's Fun Pit in Columbus, Texas. Got a sick rain here a couple days before. The trails are gonna be absolutely perfect. Gonna go out here and practice, check things out. Let's race! Just got back from practice. Oh my God, that track is so fun. I'm kind of scared it's gonna be beat up by the time we get on it, but good Lord, that's one of the best properties we've ridden on in a long time. That moisture really helped out the dirt. I just can't wait to get out there and get racing. Woo, Chris, what do you think about that course, bro? Oh man, it's primo. It's, it's primo? It's like, amazing. it doesn't get any better than that. Cool what? temperatures, perfect dirt. Oh, it's gonna be a, uh, a lot of breaking bumps and it's going to be a lot of uh, deep ruts in some of those spots, but it's going to be a lot of fun. What was your favorite part about the course? Um, that's a tough question. Okay. Honestly, I like the the gravel hill, the hard hill, the little hill where you have to, you know, you, know, you can go left to the easy or up the hill. The hill is my favorite part. Now here's the real question. Who's going to win between you and me? I will never say you. <laughs> but, but, mm, I think you might get me. <laughs> and you want to know why? Hey, you want to know why? Why? It's because I'm hungover. Oh, see? Race preparation, folks. Some of us I have the to, discipline. Too much tequila. Last Some of us don't. Nah, we'll see. I definitely pushed it way too hard on lap two in practice, so who knows? I'll probably just gas out after lap one and just give up, so. I hope so. I'll just give it to you. All right, good. God dang, look at this bike, dude. Where'd you get that? <laughs> All right, folks, CND races are about to start. We're gonna run down there and check them out.
forgot to fill up the gas box. Kind of got a bad start. I spun the tire, but when the course turned back to the right here, I was kind of in a good spot to pick up pick up a bunch of spots. Was able to get a couple get a couple passes here. Made an adjustment out of that one rut into the other. Jessica Hearn comes spilling out of the trees. Trying to show us who's boss. <laughs> oh. I guess Harper stalled it right there. Put me through that ribbon. This is actually my first time watching this, so I, I usually will cut the race down and then watch it, but this is like my genuine first reaction. This was an intense start. I mean, I think the, the soil was so grippy, we were all willing to just twisted yeah I was saying I was saying that was a badass start because I didn't really come off the line very well but I just feel like I managed I managed it well for for what I for you know what happened <laughs> here's old William Hank me and him had a great race we were going back and forth the whole time Talk to Kenny. I think he, Kenny Wickman or Wishman. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. Uh, I think he might be right behind me here. I don't know why I chose this little right line right there. Oh, Hank, William Hank is ripping. Oh yeah. Oh man, I almost buried it right there. That was almost catastrophic. Hell yeah, this looks sick. I actually look like I'm going fast. What's going on here? Woo! I have no idea. I don't know what's going on there. I I kind of cut around that tree. <laughs> I think William Hank took a pretty pretty sharp left there and a good generous cut of that corner. God, this this trail was awesome. I know I speak for everybody when I say pra the 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 laps in practice were probably some of the best conditions I think I've ever ridden on anywhere. But this this place definitely got beat up because of how just primo and soft it was. Oh, gotta get that bike flopped over side to side a little bit quicker. I like those turns. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Bodies everywhere! <laughs> Whew! Almost laid it over right there. Alright, we're in the woods. 
time to relax a little bit. Catch your breath. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Yep. Feeling good, man. In the race. Just trucking along. Massive route there. Just uh, trying to get an idea of my pace and figure out where I fit in. I mean, the, everybody's right here in front of me. You know, this is probably one of the first races where, like, people didn't just straight up just drive away. Usually I get I get left behind pretty good on the start, and then I'll... I, Uh-oh. Oh, there's Jessica. <laughs> I think that was I think that was William Hank too. Oh, that was a turn a lot of people were blowing right there. Yeah, usually I'll, I'll kind of get left on the start and then kind of catch up with consistency. I've been, I've been doing a pretty good job in most of these races recently, not not dropping the bike and. Uh, I think I only had one fall at Nessick. I, I know I only had one fall in this race. And that's that's been, you know, a really great way to save time, obviously. You know, I, I know we left the uh, we left the trail pretty beat up for the uh, Sunday guys, but these first this first lap of the uh, Saturday race, it, it was still in great shape just looking at it here. I told myself I was going to try to, you know, see the straightaway and blast down the straightaway. If I see the course and it's straight, go. But I'm still just, I'm still not there. And all that, all those ideas go out the window. Okay. So there's a little pile up there. And I think that's where that line got created right there was that, was that little pile up. There's a little line right there off to the left I was missing. But uh, in any case, I told myself I was going to work on some things. And, uh, you know, you get out there in a race and all that kind of goes out the window. Come on, Steve-O. Oh, my God. I, this is my most hated section right here. These straight up marble whoops. I'm terrible in these conditions. Especially right here. Good lord. Swallow your whole bike, that whoop. Now now entering root land. Those, this wasn't bad too, too bad through here. I think the better line was go to that left, go to the left of that fallen log. I thought that 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 diagonal log right there gave me a freaking flat. I hit it so hard, it felt like concrete. I'm not slow. I'm not fast either. I'm, I am. I am proud to, you know, see that I'm. I'm. I'm hanging with the pack a little bit here. Could be a lot worse. It has been in previous races. Nice. I always found that left-hander right there challenging. 
can't believe we got six laps of this stuff. Alright, let's go. See right here. It's too slow. I can see it. I need to hit it. Alright, piling up. Everybody's going left. What I didn't know is there's that I should have followed Harper right there. I should have followed him. Sheesh. Hit it. That turn was so sketchy. I was watching some of the videos on Facebook and people were just were just eating shit right there. This section always kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies. Those real square edge bumps. That rut right there never felt clean on it. That will come up later. Alright. Lap two. Let's do it. Starting off strong, we find a nice little ace to keep up our sleeve for the remaining laps. Head to the open section here, I go the wrong way around a tree, only to find one of my competitors taking a dirt nap in the middle of the trail. Here I prove that even though it looks fast on camera, I'm actually quite slow. Jessica Hearn and four others easily pass me on the inside. William Hank streaks in from the left. Rounding the corner here, William Hank tangles with another rider. Now I know where the man to beat is. That's what she's on. Moving further down here, William Hank proves that speed isn't everything, blows a corner and lets me by. Further ahead here, William Hank drops an atomic rev bomb and I confuse him for a pro. And then an actual pro flies by me and makes me question why I ever decided to race a dirt bike in the first place. Later on, two pros give me a near-death experience, and I do my best impression of my Open D days, finishing out the lap with this sketchy hill climb. And we're on to lap three. Starting off strong, I pulled the ace out of my sleeve that I picked up on the last lap, only to give all that time back by voluntarily pulling over and letting literally 2,000 people from my own class go by. Further up the trail, I let a pro go through, only to play myself for a fool by trying to pass someone who I honestly know is faster than me. Continuing to play the character of Rolling Roadblock, I move over to let Lincoln Gertz by, along with Clayton McGrath, and later William Hank passes me and now we're back in the fight.
Moving along here, I twist the throttle solely for the purpose of showing off to my girlfriend who I don't think was actually standing there, and then I find Clayton McGrath on the ground in the next corner. Staying as far out of the way as possible and to the right, Greg Lindbeck streaks by on the inside and reminds me once again why I want to be just like him when I grow up. Moving further ahead, I confuse Kenny for a pro and move out of the way, only to absolutely smash my finger on a log doing my best job to make it look like it was on purpose. Down the trail, my bike almost gets swallowed whole by a whoop, and then William Hank appears out of nowhere again. After that near crash, we find Juan Sanchez going backwards on the trail, and then William Hank pulls over to check out the cool stick that he found. Moving along here, I continue on with my trail ride, and then Joe Lebrecht gives me the motivation I need to crush the hill climb. Further down, we see Harper on the side of the trail doing bike maintenance, and I pass him, only for him to immediately fire back and sneak down on the inside. We're on to lap four. Coming out of the gate strong on lap four, an old man tries to commit suicide by dirt bike race, and Lincoln Gertz pulls his bike out of the dirt. Further up the trail, I move over to let a couple upperclassmen by, and then William Hank drops another atomic rev bomb, and I mistakenly let him by once again. Another 15 seconds ahead, I follow William Hank to explore the line that he found and immediately reduce my speed to a slug's pace as a peace offering to the riders behind me for my cheating ways. Immediately after, Troop Feldman and Juan Sanchez pass me and it began to streak away into the distance, reminding me once again that I have no clue how to ride a dirt bike. Continuing my role as a rolling roadblock, I catch and pass Greg Lindbeck, regaining just a slight glimmer of optimism. Further along, Harper pulls over to check his starter motor, and I avoid a booby trap set by the sweepers. Up ahead, I'm forced into a mandatory mid-race limbo contest, only to find William Hank waiting for me and ready to restart our battle.
Now we crush the hill climb and avoid a small crash and we're on to lap five. Immediately after the start of lap five, we find Chris Cobain pulled over for a meditation break, and I take the lead in my battle with William Hank as he struggles to stay on the bike over the roots. Further ahead, Greg Lindbeck continues to use his screen time wisely, looking as absolutely cool as possible, and William Hank streaks in from El Paso, Texas. Hey! Ahead, Forrest Player continues his campaign of demoralization, lapping me for a second time, and I peek over my shoulder, confused to find that William Hank is somehow behind me again. As if on cue, William Hank streaks by me on the inside and gets his Coast Guard training started early, doing his best impression of Olympic freediver. Up ahead, I let two pros go by and then pull over to check to make sure my starter motor is working properly. God damn it! We're on to lap six. Starting my last lap charge strong, I pull over to let Tyler Morgan by, and he proceeds to use his voodoo magic as a cruel joke to make my bike stall as he goes by. Showing his compassion for the open beer racers, Nathan Gertz gives me a mid-race hearing test, ensuring that I can hear that a pro is behind me. I fucking hear you! Go! <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Doing my best to show you guys how not to race a dirt bike, I stall out and then go on to let my race rival by without a fight and then proceed to crash just for good measure. Finishing up here, I crush one final hill climb and settle into a last second battle with Harper Wilder to close out the race. Tough race, great, awesome track, tough uh, tough conditions at the end there with the whoops and, and the track getting beat up. Can't imagine what the guys dealt with on Sunday, but uh, all in all, really, really great time, really great property. It's the best I've, I've ever seen it, some of the best conditions the whole, the whole season, and uh, really was a great time putting, putting six laps in on that, on that property.